Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our lunchtime uh, learning session uh, on CAQH and Core Exploration's Research and Me Measurement uh, Initiatives. I'm Jessica Porras, and I'm the Senior Manager for Education and Outreach at CAQH Core. Next slide. I'd like to cover a couple of logistics before we get started with our programming. You feel free to ask questions at any time during the program. We'll be taking Q&A at the end of the session. In addition, uh, if you see there on your panel on the right-hand side, uh, there's a way to access these slides if you would like to do that and go along with us. Uh, if you'd rather wait, you can just follow along the recording. Uh, in addition, we'll send the slides and the recording to all of you tomorrow. Next slide. So today we will get through uh, an overview of the research work uh, at CAQH Exploration. Then we'll cover some of the new work that we're doing here at CAQH Cores uh, regarding our pilot and measurement initiative. And like I said earlier, we'll have some time for Q&A. Next slide. I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, Christine Bernaska, who's our Director of Research and Measurement here at CAQH. Christine? Hi, Jessica. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us on uh, this short webinar today. I'm going to walk through a couple slides with you related to explorations, who we are, what we do, talk about our main research initiative, which is the CAQH Annual Index Report, which some of you may be familiar with. Then I'm going to talk a bit about other research initiatives that we are working on. <clears throat> so next slide, please. So what does exploration do? So we are the research arm of CAQH, and we manage and facilitate all the data-driven initiatives within the company. And the, they predominantly focus on demonstrating the impact of streamlining business processes. So for those of you familiar with CORE and perhaps solutions and some of our other departments, our mission is, CAQH missions overall, is to work to understand and better streamline business processes for the industry. So all of our research initiatives have that in mind. In addition to working on our own research agenda and explorations, we also work closely with internal stakeholders to promote and support the mission, which I just said, and also the products that CAQH offers. Um, as well, we collaborate and engage with the industry to gain um, and share valuable insights both ways. We um, as you know, have worked with some of you in the past, whether it be on the index data collection effort or with some of the core initiatives that are taking place. Next slide. So one of the key research activities that exploration leads is the annual CAQH index. Um, and so for those of you not familiar with the index, I'm just going to very briefly give a high level overview of it. So the index is the industry source for tracking and benchmarking medical and dental plan and provider adoption of fully electronic transactions. It also tracks and tracks time and cost savings opportunities associated with switching from manual and partially electronic transactions to fully electronic transactions. And for those of you not familiar with the index, when I'm talking about transactions, we are primarily talking about HIPAA mandated transactions, although there are a few that are not HIPAA mandated. So we cover transactions within the administrative workflow, starting with when a patient schedules an appointment all the way through payment and billing. So we just, in January, launched our 2019 CAQH index report, and that's the seventh report that we've produced, CAQH. Uh, the index has been, and the report <clears throat> is guided by a council of voluntary members, and they consist of experts in the field, those who have expertise in administrative data, uh, transactions, analyses, and just healthcare management overall. Uh, 
in the council, we try to have a broad range of representation. So we have not only providers and health plans represented, but also vendors and some other industry partners and associations. In terms of what the index measures, annually the index reports on plan adoption of electronic transactions, transaction volume for plans and providers, cost and time savings opportunities for the industry. And new this year, we are reporting on, or we're able to report on costs avoided and spend for the industry and plans and providers. For the last few years, the data has represented about 50% of medical indentures covered life. And we are pleased to report that. We have on the medical and dental side, we receive uh, data from dental providers as well as medical providers. And last year, we partnered with NCPDP to conduct a pharmacy survey index, which measures PBM's adoption of electronic transactions. And those transactions are both HIPAA transactions as well as the NCPDP telecommunication standards. And so we have not reported out on that yet, but we do hope to report um, some findings later this year. Next slide. So next I'm gonna talk with you a bit about the 2020 index. So we are currently gearing up for the 2020 index data collection effort. And we are working closely with our index advisory council on not only the content and flow of the index, but as well as the timing of data collection. Last year, we started data collection in June, and it ended in August. And given the current environment with COVID, we want to be very mindful of resources and what uh, plans and providers are going through. So we're working to determine when we should begin data collection. Uh, we anticipate the data collection will begin in late June, but again, um, given the volatility with COVID and uh, resources, staffing, et cetera, that, that may change. Um, but that's where we stand right now. Uh, similar to previous years, we work to enhance the survey to bring additional value to the industry. So for those of you who have participated in the index in the past, you may see small tweaks to questions flow, you may see additional questions. And this is all with the thought that we will be able to report on additional insights that are relevant to the industry. And as I'd mentioned before, we work with the council to determine what are relevant topics um, in the industry and what would be helpful and useful for our stakeholders to know more about. So this year, we've added um, a few multiple choice questions to the index related to the following. So, uh, and there's four sets. The first being uh, resources associated with completing tasks along the prior authorization workflow. And the second is, we're asking questions, how plans and providers exchange patient provider attribution under a typical VBP arrangement. The third set of new questions is how organizations are interacting with FIRE. And the last question is how COVID is impacting transaction volume. And these topics came about from not only consulting with our council, but also just from discussing topics internally with our internal stakeholders, the executive board, um, our council, and the CAQH board just to see what could potentially be of interest and useful to the industry. I will say that all these questions will be multiple choice and we're very mindful of this because we do not want to add additional burden to the survey. Um, we know that we have a core set of questions which I mentioned to you before that are around volume adoption and cost and time savings opportunities and in no way want to compromise uh, folks answering that. And all those enhancements that I just discussed will be made to the medical survey. Currently, uh, on the dental survey, we're keeping it as is. Next slide.
So, and Christine, so now we have I think, options. um, oh. nope, go ahead, Christine. Jessica. I'm gonna thank you, Christine. I'm gonna just take a quick pause for a polling question and then we'll get uh, keep going with uh, your presentation. Um, so for those of you listening, uh, if you could respond to the poll and let us know whether you're interested in participating in the 2020 index. And while we keep the poll open, I'm going to ask uh, Christine a question that came in earlier. Uh, and the question is, uh, what does an organization gain from participating in the data collection effort for the index? Yeah, great question, Jessica. For all participants, be it plans or providers, we, at the end of data collection, we provide each organization or practice with a benchmark report. And what that does is take the key metrics related to adoption, volume, and cost, and shows where you as an organization are relative to the rest of the sample. And so in the past, we've had a lot of the participants say that the report has been really helpful. It's been used in management meetings to look at uh, when they're doing planning for the following year, for resources, staffing, et cetera. Thanks so much, Christine. So I think we'll close the poll um, and we'll follow up with those of you who responded yes or unsure and we'll keep going uh, with the next slide. Take it away, Christine. Great, thanks, Jessica. So in addition to working on the index, Exploration is also working on the following CAQH research initiatives. And so I will go through each one of these fairly quickly, but if anyone has um, questions related to these initiatives and or the index, please reach out to us um, and let us know. And I, I should point out that the CAQH index report is on our website that um, is easily accessible. So please let us know um, if you have any issues accessing them. So getting back to the research initiatives, <clears throat> as I mentioned, there are four. Uh, the first thing, we're working with solutions to better understand provider burden. There's been a lot about that um, in the news, not necessarily right now, given everything is, is COVID related, but previously. And so we were interested in learning more about that. So specifically, we surveyed providers to understand the resources associated with maintaining directories as well as credentialing providers. And the survey took place in Q4 of 2019. And in November of 2019, we published a paper related to provider directories, which some of you may have seen. And one of the key findings was that we found that maintaining a directory cost physician practices about $2.8 billion annually. And uh, that is a number that has not been reported and was something that we could add to the industry. The paper also looked at cost differences by region, practice size, and number of contracts, as well as cost savings associated with using a single directory platform as opposed to multiple platforms. Currently, we're working on a paper that evaluates differences in credentialing costs by regions and hope to have that out in the next couple months. Um, and again, if you would like to have additional, learn additional information about this paper, that is also on our website. Uh, additionally, along with solutions, we are digging deeper into enrollment trends, looking at the shift in enrollment pre and post COVID to see where uh, those who have lost insurance due to a um, job termination are they picking up government funded programs or are they moving on to um, a spouse's program? So digging a bit deeper into that. Additionally, we're using the index as well as our relationship with council members to begin evaluating provider resources along the prior authorization workflow. That has prior authorization has been um, in the news quite a bit in the past given the complexities with it, the lack of standards, et cetera, um, and also now just given some of the relaxation with the uh, prior auth requirements. And finally, we're working with CORE to evaluate the impact of the CORE operating rules on the prior authorization workflow. 
And with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Rachel Goldstein to discuss this initiative in more detail. Thanks, Christine, and thanks everyone for being with us today uh, during your lunch, or if you're on the West Coast, maybe your late breakfast. Um, so I'm going to laser focus, um, like Christine mentioned, on our preauthorization pilot and measurement initiatives. And first, I guess before I talk about the initiative in more detail, if we can move to the next slide, just a super quick overview for those of you who may not be super familiar with with CORE and our operating roles. Um, many of you probably already know we're, we're an industry-driven organization comprised of participating organizations, uh, including providers, plans, vendors, government bodies, associations, SDOs, so very multi-stakeholder as well as our board. And our participating organizations develop operating roles for healthcare transactions, particularly around the intersection of administrative and clinical which of course prior authorization is um, a critical aspect of that. So the operating roles layer on top of industry standards and then implementing organizations in industry can adopt these rules on top of the standards and are able to become certified with our core certification program to show conformance with the standards and rules. So this slide is, is the takeaway for you. I won't go through it in detail, but we have existing prior authorization operating roles that our participants developed and the board approved. Uh, includes things like uh, system availability requirements, required response time frame requirements, um, which is a big deal in terms of standardizing that expectation nationally, and also some data content requirements to ensure that electronic levers to really streamline that back and forth communication between a plan and provider are used consistently. We're also uh, this year working on some additional potential requirements to add to the rule set around uh, the exchange of additional clinical documentation and an update to our connectivity requirements. Okay, so that was quick. How does this all relate back to our pilot and measurement initiative? Uh, next slide. So we started planning for this initiative last year. Uh, some of you are already involved, but we fully, we, we really kicked off kind of in Q4 of, of last year. Uh, impact information is really more important than ever, as, as I know I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, organizations like yourselves really want to know um, if improvements you're implementing are, are worth the effort. You know, you know it is, but you need metrics to back it up, especially to executives um, in a time where resources are scarce, especially now. And we all crave these success stories and lessons learned um, from other organizations who've tried things out. So we know that standards and operating roles save time, reduce burden. You know, the, the work that Christine just spoke about, a lot of our CAQH index work supports that. Our years of environmental scanning to support operating role development at core support that. But can we dig a layer deeper? Can we start to collaborate with implementer organizations to measure a layer down? And uh, really, can we use these insights as a continuous improvement feedback loop to strengthen the operating roles, as well as a way to offer you know, additional guidance for implementing organizations like yourselves who are looking for standard ways to measure their prior authorization improvement projects and really improve workflows? So this is the heart and soul of our pilot and, measure and measurement initiative. You know, bringing uniformity and consistency to the way we measure the impact of PA automation enhancements so that organizations can track and articulate impact. And, and also, I should mention, given CORE's role as the national operating author, as appropriate, some of this work can really inform potential recommendations to the National Committee on Vital and Health Statistics, which is the advisory council to the Secretary of Health and Human Services. So I should note real quickly that you can participate whether you already have a pilot or implementation running within your organization, if it's in progress, or if you're kind of interested in collaborating from the ground up to scope one uh, together. So more on that in a, in a couple of slides. Let's talk first on the next slide about what we're actually measuring. So we worked with several implementer organizations to build this list of measures. And really the overarching goal of this list is 
Um, you know, if each pilot grouping tracks these measures or some of these measures, we have a common list and that allows for more, more impactful takeaways at kind of an industry level. So, of course, there are unique considerations. Anybody that's done research ever knows that um, across organizations. But having this sort of standard list is really important. And these measures build on um, the way measures are, are organized sort of in the CEQH index. We've got volume, time, you know, co you know a cost saving type impact situation, but we're a, la a layer deeper. So, so for example, let's take a couple of, of examples. Um, in the volume bucket, tracking the number of status hops or changes that require provider staff manual intervention. So the hypothesis here is that this is going to reduce after implementation of standards and associated operating rules. And another one also due to efficiencies um, in electronically communicating next steps and, and data needs, we should see a reduction in time it takes to get from when a provider is seeing that initial pend for additional documentation to the final determination. So you don't have to track all of these, but we wanted to share this list, list with you. Um, and we work with uh, organizations to figure out which are most important um, for them and also the availability of this data and accuracy across comparison groups so we can help limit uh, collection burden and setup. So as we move to the next slide, CORE provides, CQH CORE um, and, and Christine, you know, I have the joy of working very closely with her on this project. Um, we provide quite a bit of support for organizations that are interested in participating in this initiative. Um, one thing I do want to highlight is that we've heard from our participants um, that a major benefit is that when you collaborate with us, um, you, you're really receiving the guidance of a neutral third party, you know, nonprofit with expertise in PA standards and operating rules. And we work with you. Uh, depending on where you are in your effort already to develop or validate measurement approaches, identify comparison groups, specify data needs, and help you articulate exactly where the standards and operating rules already apply to what you're doing, so current and future state. And to participate with us, there needs to be a pilot grouping. So, for example, a health plan and a health system that are trading partners or a health system and a PA vendor that uh, work with plans. We can help with this as needed. And on the bottom of this slide, you'll see um, what the expectations are of participants. So I won't go through this in detail now, but feel free to take a look. You have the slides, they'll get sent to you after the call. Um, and they're also attached here. On the next slide, we've received quite a few questions, um, very understandably so, about if organizations can participate, um, if, for example, they had started a measurement initiative, but they're on pause due to um, COVID-19, whether it's resource scarcity to work the project or because there's actually been, as you guys know, a huge reduction in volume of prior authorization uh, requests given the policy changes coming through uh, from the plan. So, so this, is, this is a big wave and um, we certainly have put some thought into this. So on this slide, this is just kind of a takeaway for you guys. Depending on where you are and thinking through um, thinking through your pilot uh, or or implementation of, of an improvement or standards and operating rules for prior authorization, um, there are different different ways, different things we can really honestly do with you now. Um, and so I want to highlight the, the the middle one specifically, which is, you know, what if what if my um, organization started a project but it's on hold because of COVID-19 and we wouldn't have valuable takeaways because of the reduction in volume on prior authorization. So if your project is on hold, uh, you know, CORE can really provide that support for ensuring a seamless restart once PA volume is normalized. So we can work with you on validation of appropriate timeframes for measurement and your baseline and pre-data so that it's really all set to go once you kind of restart that situation. Um, and then moving on, you know, we also can work with you if you've already completed an implementation. This is for folks that are really interested in articulating their impact. It's a little bit um, backwards in terms of working together, but it's still totally um, valid and works. And we would encourage folks to reach out to us if they're interested um, in support for articulating impact 
with standard measures and particularly sharing your successes or lessons learned. I'm going to send it back over to Jessica for a quick polling question. Thank you, Rachel, and thank you, Christine, as well for your presentation. Let's take a second poll. Uh, you've just heard uh, Rachel describe uh, the research and measurement initiative, so we'd like to know uh, if you're interested in getting involved or learning more about the initiative. Um, so let's give this a couple of seconds. I've been working with Rachel and Christine for many years, and I can assure you this will be a value add for your organization. So let's go ahead and close the poll, and I think we have a few minutes to take questions. Great. So uh, the next question I think can be for both speakers. Um, the question is, we can't work uh, on other initiatives right now because all our resources are going to COVID-19. Can we volunteer at a later date? Christine, do you want to go first? Sure. In regard to the index, yes, you can definitely join at uh, or participate, I should say, at a, at a later date. Uh, right now, as I mentioned, we're working on that 2020 data collection schedule, which I think will start the end of July, beginning of August. If you are not able to participate this year, we you, you will definitely um, be conducting the index next year and you are able to participate at that point. Uh, we also will be doing some um, work on PA workflows and understanding resources associated with that. So if you have interest in helping with that, please let us know as well. Rachel? Yeah, so I mean, for the for the research and measurement initiative um, for, for pi the pilot PA, um, of course you can volunteer at a later date. We're really sensitive to this. This project is ongoing. Um, like I just mentioned, there are lower level of effort ways to kind of get, you know, set the table per se now. So you're, you know, you're ready to, to get going um, when you are ready and do have resources and, and we can definitely help with that. Um, but for some orgs, that's just actually not even an option. Um, so if you let us know, you know, of your interest, we can circle back with you later on. And, you know, we're very sensitive to that. So, but absolutely, you know, keep us in mind. Thanks so much. Uh, the next question is for Rachel. Uh, the question is, my organization's working on a 278 implementation project. Should we prioritize core certification or the core PA measurement initiative? So really, um, I guess good news for your organization. First of all, congratulations on, on pursuing that implementation. That's great. Um, but, but second of all, I think actually you can kind of do both simultaneously. The, the first step for, for both the measurement initiative pilot as well as the uh, as well as getting course certified is is under is, is making sure you've implemented all the operating rules in order to get certified. And the first step with the with the measurement initiative is to understand um, where current operating rules apply so that when we do the impact analysis, we can actually isolate that. So it's really kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, so I don't think you have to choose. Thanks so much. Um, and I think we have time for one more question. I'm going to uh, send one to Christine. Uh, Christine, do you anticipate having data on the pharmacy transactions for the 2020 index? I joined, I would love to be able to report on um, the pharmacy services index. Right now, we are encouraging PBMs and working with NCPDP to obtain more participants uh, in order to report on the data. So more, more to come on that. Great. Thank you, Christine. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So this slide includes some benefits to joining a core as a participant. Uh, on the next slide, there's some information our website, our email, ways to engage with us via social media. We do have some uh, fun programming coming up in the next month or so. 
We plan a webinar with core board members to chat with them about priority topics. We'll also be conduct conducting webinars on connectivity uh, as well as prior authorization. So uh, keep uh, checking our our website for that kind of information. We look forward to uh, seeing you virtually very soon. With that, thank you for your time and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.